Like the Quest 2, the Quest 3 has a litany of different quirks and faults ranging from melted ports to failing displays. This isn't uncommon for a newly released product, hardware faults are inevitable, and Meta has done a very respectable job of replacing broken units. That's not to say that you can't do anything about preventing some of these issues and long-term problems that you may end up having with the headset through improper use. So today I'm speedrunning everything that you should not do with your Quest 3 into one schizophrenic video, and if anything I list today helps prevent Zuckerberg from greasing up his bald head and sliding through your air ventilation system, but like and subscribe would go a long way in helping me pay my taxes that I forgot existed. I gotta testify. Do not pull the face pad mechanism like I did and break the shit out of it. Basically, the Quest 3 has this face pad adjustment mechanism that lets you slide the face pad closer or further away from your face. So to keep this light and cheap, well, the face pad's mechanism is light and cheap. And if you pull the face pad off to replace the head strap or to clean the headset, you run the risk of breaking this mechanism like I did, leaving me with this flimsy joke of a face pad which to replace is a cool $45. So be gentle and push or pull from areas that don't put strain on this mechanism like pushing from the top front of the face pad. When I become a mama's boyfriend. Don't get into a car crash. Sorry to hijack this video, if you want to skip this and go straight to the Quest 3 stuff, there's chapters down below, but this happened. This is my friend Leon, he owns a Subaru Impressor. It's his only car and arguably his only child and this car caused me to buy my own Subaru and has all meant a huge amount to myself and my friend group. A few days ago got nailed by a European eco box sh box jumping a giveaway. The driver admitted the fault, but financially this is still nailed Leon and the Impreza as much as we love it was only worth two grand or so and was immediately written off. I owe a lot to this guy, he's a great friend and he's always been there with my car related content that I've made on my second channel. If any of you guys could show him any support and check out his channel, I know he'll deeply appreciate it. It's linked down below and he's already shot a couple of videos with me and my Subaru. Okay, thank you for listening. Okay, let's just get these melted ports out of the way. Already, images have begun to circle online of people with melted Quest 3 ports. This was pretty frequently seen online with the Quest 2. I mean, to an astonishing degree, what the f*** is this? But all these instances seem to have one thing in common, the charger. A large chunk of these posts, particularly the bad ones, seem to be using third-party chargers, many of which used higher wattage, shown by VR Panda on Twitter, using a high wattage charger caused a bit of melting around the charge port and said that 18 watts is plenty. That said, the Quest 2s have been known to also melt with the stock charger, though perhaps not to the same degree. So to just best prevent this with either headset, just stick to 18 wattage chargers or lower, or just the stock charger, or only charge the headset until the headset indicator LED goes green, and then unplug the headset. Don't leave it charging longer than you need to, and definitely don't leave it charging while you're out. This may seem like painfully obvious to many of you, but you would not believe the amount of people who have told me to my face over at my Discord at Discord GG forward slash get, just saying, that when they're not using their headset, they just leave it on charge indefinitely. That said, from my understanding over time, through charging and discharging any lithium ion battery powered device, including the Quest, the battery cells can get out of balance, leading to the headset incorrectly believing that it has 100% charge when only a few of the cells have reached their maximum capacity, leaving you with a battery that may say that it's fully charged when in reality it's maybe only 70% charged. From what I've read regarding other lithium ion devices, letting it charge for longer, even once it's hit 100%, where every like five to 10 charge cycles is a good way to keep the cells around the same charge level. Also, just for the general health of the headset's battery, avoiding letting the headset drop below 20% can also help reduce extra stress experienced by the battery pack. That said, I wouldn't be surprised if Meta already has the battery set up in a way that it never lets it get low enough to cause battery damage, but I wouldn't suggest that you let your headset repeatedly go completely flat if you want to prioritize your long-term battery health, especially since the Quest 2's battery life is so bad to begin with. Basically, keep it charged, but not for too long and don't let it discharge too much and don't let it really discharge too often. Pretty straightforward. So this port melting really shouldn't be happening either way, no matter how you charge it, especially on the Quest 3. I mean, this is getting like a little bit silly now. The Elite Strap. Both the Elite Battery Strap and the regular Elite Strap, as both of these are a bit of a joke. As most of you are probably well aware of by now, the Quest 2 Elite Strap would frequently break at the sides due to stress over time. Now, it's not clear if this has been fixed with the new Elite Strap or not, as people just haven't used this thing for long enough to elicit any breakages. But let's say that Meta has fixed this issue. Is the head strap worth it? Nope. Not remotely. I mean, what the fuck, man? This is the most low effort attempt at a head strap I think I've ever seen in my life. I'm not trying to be overly negative towards meta. It's just this is sh For context, this head strap costs around $90 in the UK, sitting at 70 British pounds. For this money, you could get any range of well developed third party head straps that provide actual strap padding and back padding. Things that the Elite strap offers neither of. The back pad and the top strap have literally no padding. The back pad is just harsh, sticky rubber that grips the 
back of your hair when you put it on and tugs away at your hair during games. This is a completely bare bones, low effort product that I think Meta knew they could get away with because so many people buy this in a bundle like they did with the Quest 2 Elite strap without considering third party options. And that's just the regular Elite strap. The Elite battery strap that Meta was selling for a cool $160, at least in the UK, as here it's priced at £130, which is about $160. Before I get into what's wrong with this head strap, holy shit, I mean $160 for a piece of plastic with a batter in it is insane. I mean, they really don't give a f at all. For reference, you can pick up a third party head strap with a battery in it for about £50, which is about $60 or so. To be clear, with all these products in the US, I think Meta priced them at the same number, but they don't adjust that number for the conversion rates. So in the US, this head strap is $130, which is still insane, but the UK is paying $160. So besides the mentally deranged price, what is actually wrong with it? Uh, it doesn't work. It also isn't sold anymore. Meta have temporarily halted the battery strap after a large chunk of users complained that it didn't even charge their headset. VR News publisher Road to VR published their own findings after running a survey that suggested about 40% of users who responded had these charging issues. Meta also stated that they're investigating the issue, but haven't mentioned investigating the uh, mental stability of whoever set these prices. This leads me to do just don't buy any of Meta's accessories. They clearly don't respect any of the customers that buy them. Putting in bare minimum effort to create anything valuable and pricing them at just ridiculous price points. They are straight up preying upon people who just aren't smart enough to look elsewhere. And judging by how many people just blindly bought the Elite Strap with their Quest 2, it works. Buy the Quest 3 and then look through sites like Amazon or watch review videos online for the best head straps, controller grips, or whatever before you go anywhere near the borderline abusive pricing for the cheap tat that Meta offers. <laughs> Do not sponsor my ooh ooh ah chimp ass. Unlike this very cool game that decided to because I broke the control arm on my Subaru by aquaplaning directly into a curb so I can pay for the repair. Mind Xcope, besides being Subaru repair funding gods, is a VR roguelite with a surreal art style. Seriously, visually, this is one of the most unique looking games on Quest. I think this trailer basically speaks for itself here, along with various weapons and enemies like mechanical spiders, humanoid eye flyers. The game also features sword fighting mechanics as well as a diverse array of primary weapon abilities like frozen waves and flame blasts and secondary weapons like lasers and shields and a grappling hook. The public alpha demo is out right now. It's completely free and you can download it right now on Steam VR along with the Quest version via App Lab. Join the Mind Xcope Discord server to communicate with the developers directly. I love when developers do this. The Discord is linked down below. Okay, thank you for sponsoring me and thanks for my super. Don't wipe your lenses with anything that's not a microfiber. That conveniently, Meta didn't include. Look, sometimes you can get away with wiping your lenses with your shirt. I'm not gonna act like it's a thermonuclear attack on your headset like a lot of other YouTubers do. Any of you with the glasses know how often you wipe your lenses with your shirt anyway, but glasses are easier to replace than expensive Quest 3 lenses that will require you to send the headset back to Meta if they're scratched. So in the honestly pretty likely chance that you have something harsh enough in your sweater or shirt to scrape the lens, just use a microfiber and definitely don't use a paper towel. Paper are basically made up of wood fibers or something. Basically, you shouldn't even use this to wipe budge to of your car as it can leave micro scrapes in your clear coat, let alone wiping expensive VR pancake lenses with them. Don't leave these lenses facing the sun. The lenses act like a magnifying glass and will fucking toast the shit out of your display. I think most of us know this by now, but with all the new users getting this headset, it's worth reiterating. Also, with these new sensors on the front of the headset, I'd also just avoid putting those directly in sunlight for any long periods. It might be fine, but I wouldn't be surprised if the glass to some degree helps magnify or intensify the heat of the sun and would act in a potentially similar manner over long periods of time. I'm just speculating, but I would avoid just blasting these with sunlight. And I'm back. Oh my Do not subscribe to my second channel for car videos. It's terrible and I have no idea what I'm doing. Or even worse, whatever you do, don't. Beautiful big titty butt naked women just don't follow the sky, you know.